hi everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Ayoko Fishola and I'm really excited to be here on this page I preach the Word of God and I do fitness content so if you are wanting to see content like that then keep watching um, so yes our last video we talked about Jesus is Lord and Jesus is God and actually I asked some people in the comment section below who had some some really interesting things to say about it um, but before we start today's video and I'll be reading out the comments but before we start today's video I want us to pray because today's topic is another interesting one we're gonna be talking about the burden of the cross the burden of the cross so close your eyes and let's pray Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for your grace upon our lives today. Thank you for it. Waking on the life of the audience and giving them the grace to seek you today, seeking your word and growing in their faith. But I exalt your name, O oh God, over their lives. Thank you for blessing them. And I thank you for what you're going to do in today's sermon. And I know that you're going to move marvelously today in the name of the lord jesus but i thank you god that during the during the duration of the time that we're going to be pre preaching and they listening that there would be no distractions in the name of the lord jesus heavenly father i thank you god for in jesus mighty name i pray amen okay so um guys um yes on the other video which is like um how is jesus lord and god part one video um i had someone comment and say like by the way please do some no that was the second comment but the first one was um is lord um but being god i'm afraid that we, that is not what the bible teaches if jesus is god then who was he Pray, praying to if jesus is god then why did he say i am going back to my god and my father so who is who is the god of jesus and what is his name when you find the answer to that question then you will see the truth behind who god is jesus backed up that belief when in prayer to his heavenly father said this is eternal life that they should know you the only true god in him whom you send jesus christ john 17 3 notice how he calls his father the only true god the first century christians thought the same when they preached for example first corinthians 15 24 to 28 where we see in verses 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 24 that jesus as a god and father and that in verses 28 he subjected himself to his father to his god and, and father some do say however that jesus does address god as his god and his father because he was a man however one of the clear scripture which shows that jesus is not god is revelation chapter 3 to 12 where we see jesus was not a man but back in heaven the one who is victorious i will make a pillar in the temple of my god never again will they leave it i will write on them the name of my god and the name of the city of my god the new jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my god and i will also write on them my name my new name new um international version so the question was who is the god of jesus and what is his name okay so my reply to um let's mention his name uh, switch video is i gave him the verse the verse colossians chapter 2 verse 9 saying for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily um godhead is the essence and substance of god inside of jesus dwells the bodily substance of god the holy trinity makes up god his son and the holy ghost who is the God of Jesus? It's God. Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 27 says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he, Jesus, was right to tease, and I will give it to it. It's because we're saying that Jesus is the God of the whole world, right? Ezekiel, I will say it again, Ezekiel 21 27 says, I will overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he whose right it is and i will give it him right jesus is the god of the whole world the bible says in matthew chapter 20 verse 26 verse to 28 in, instead whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant whoever wants to be the first must be your slave just as, as the son of man 
did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many he earned it god and jesus do not have the same office but they are god right to deny jesus is tied to as god is saying that everything he is suffering even to this present day deserves no honor and i said i was going to make another video to clarify so i hope that basically gives you more understanding regarding that and i understand like you know where your argument is coming from and i think that you know it's very easy for you to be um to miss that in the bible and they will it says like you will not know the truth except like the holy spirit discloses that to you um but the the reason for my video is basically to try to um bring into light the truth right um so yeah i feel like definitely there is a blessing when you know jesus as god there's a difference between when you know jesus as your lord and when you know him as the owner of the whole world the, the way we're able to get gain access and to say that we own the whole world ourselves is because jesus does own the entire world um i'm gonna be talking about this even more but today's topic is going to be the burden of the cross okay um, I was reading Matthew 26 verse um, chapter 26 verse 38 to 43 and we're going to be reading that and we're going to see the burden of the cross on Jesus and basically Jesus's emotion having all that responsibility laid on him okay so I'm going to begin um, 38 says then kjv version says then said he unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful at this point jesus was in gethsemane he was with um his disciples um peter james and john um and then he said my soul is exceedingly is exceeding sorrowful even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Right? And he came unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed saying oh my father if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it thy will will be done and he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy okay so we're going to stop there so when I was reading this it's very obvious to me when I was reading it that jesus expressed his emotions to them he said unto them my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto unto death tarry ye tarry ye here and watch with me right it he needed support at that time at that moment he needed support and that's why he expressed his feeling his feelings to them but at this point jesus had so it was burdened he had he knew what laid ahead of him he had so much responsibilities on his neck and he understood what was to come okay so what i want us to understand today is the effect of the blood of jesus yes we know jesus died for us we know that you know everything that the blood of jesus does for us right for the remission of sin let's go into ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 just to remind us what jesus did for us when he came to die for us and it says in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace because of the riches of the grace of God we have redemption through his blood let's go into matthew chapter 26 and i remember the last the second part of the jesus is lord and god video we talked about leviticus chapter 16 and what they had to go through just to get purified to get into the presence of god and we spoke about the presence of god being the basically 
um, the means in which people gain access into the blessings, you know, of God. You know, God blesses people when he's with them. The blessings of God are accessed through his presence. Okay, so, and it says, um, as, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. This is my blood of the New Testament, which, which is shed for the remission of sins. So Jesus knew no sin. He came to this world. He knew no sin. He died for us. And he basically put on all the burden of sin upon him. The Bible says sin is basically in his body. He carried our sins. Let's look at First Peter chapter 2 verse 22. First Peter chapter 2 verse 22. And you know, it's really funny like how people do not realize like how important it is for them to give their life to their lives to Christ. Um, because if you're not in Christ Jesus, then you're under the curse of the law. So if you sin now, you will suffer the consequences of your actions. Right? Um, First Peter chapter 2 verse 22 says, who did no sin neither was guile found in his neither was guile found in his mouth he knew no sin he did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 second corinthians 5 verse 21 and it says for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him he was made to be sin for us jesus was literally sin for us jesus the light of the world was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him and when I think about this, I just see us carrying the light of God and Jesus covering us and we inside of him. Right? He knew no sin and we, so that we might be made the righteousness of God inside of him. So... I'm going to give you more clarity as to what that actually means so that we might become the righteousness righteousness of god inside of him does that mean that there is no darkness inside of jesus because jesus now it says was made was made was now sin right that word means something okay now let's go into second samuel chapter 7 verse 13 to 16 i want to remind us about the prophecy that God made to David. This is really important in order for us to understand what is actually going on. Okay, so it says, He shall build an house for my name, right? And I will establish, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish his throne of his kingdom forever. You know, when I thought about this, I was like, well, that's Solomon, right? That's Solomon talking. But when I started to meditate even more, Jesus will build an house for God, right? And we're going to talk about that as well. When Jesus said he's going to tear, it's going to, he's going to tear down the temple and rebuild it in three days. This is what he's saying. He said, I shall build an house for my, he shall build an house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Okay? 
and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee and thy tr throne shall be established forever this prophecy is very 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 important in the story of jesus and ex and exactly what is happening right now so before we actually go i want us to go into what we talked about even in the last video the structure the structure and order of the lordship and dominion we're going to be going into first corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 first corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 and it says to us there is but one god the father of whom are all things so everything it's it's, it's the idea that god is everywhere okay to us there is but one God, the Father, for whom are all things. And inside of God, we inside of Him, we in Him, we're inside of God. Right? And okay, so it's almost given like as if this is God here. He said there is but one God, the Father, in whom are all things. There are all things. God makes up all things. The Father of whom are all things. And we inside of God right and the lord and one lord jesus by whom are all things so there's like i said there's like another layer of all things jesus and we are by him we are by him we are by him are you listening to me we are by him he's died for us he's died for us we're not the light of the world and we're by him okay so now I want us to go into Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. Now we understand that picture. Let's go into Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 which says, For inside of him, inside of Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Inside of Christ dwells all of the substance of God bodily. And remember when we talked about first, let me go back to First Corinthians um, chapter 8 verse 6. First Corinthians 8 verse 6. And it says to us there is but one god the father in whom are all things and we inside of him and there is jesus by whom are all things and it says here in colossians chapter 2 verse 9 for in him inside of jesus so this is god inside of jesus whom are all things even again right for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead being the essence of the substance or the substance of god right bodily right so almost like i say christ is the body of god are you listening to me christ is the body of god and that is why you know when he said here in second samuel chapter 7 second samuel chapter 7 verse 13 let's go back to it okay there's something that we need to understand about the body of god that you know we need to understand something about the body of God. Okay. Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 13. Let's go back. It said, He shall build an house for my name. There is an house, the body of God. Even Jesus said it is going to build a temple. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees did not understand that he's talking about his body. His body had to die and you know be resurrected on the third day in order for them for there to be a new body. Okay, and we're going to talk about this even talking about the new heaven and the new earth where the presence of God is able to dwell in without any obstruction. Are you listening to me? The, the, the whole essence of why everything is, is because of the presence of God. There needs to be a space where the presence of God will be able to dwell without any obstruction, without any without any any um margin of error okay um so now that we understand that now that we understand exactly what is going on this is this is god and this is the body itself is jesus the whole essence of it is jesus everything inside of jesus is what we see what we can touch everything is inside the body of jesus and now will we now say that inside this corrupt world is jesus yes it's because jesus he bears our sins he bears our sins okay he bears our sins he bears our sins so now i want you to understand one thing again that jesus carries our sins 
up until this point so even as we're sinning today even as unbelievers are sinning today even as there is so many tribulations today it is all happening in the body of christ the prophecy is still being lived okay um, the Bible talks about the finished work of Jesus and I spoke about this before the sacrifice was made in the spiritual realm okay so we're still in that process um, I, there are certain things I'm going to disclose here and I've said it before that you know if you have unbelief in your heart I definitely recommend that you pray before you continue watching this video okay so let's talk about the finished work of Christ being the sacrifice like the, the the living sacrifice that was carried out right it was carried out for us to be saved for there to be for there to be remission of sin there has to be there had to be a sacrifice made are you listening to me and Jesus was the sacrifice Jesus was the exchange in on this page also we've talked about the law of substitution um, We've talked about many things already um but one thing i want you to take on with you is that you know jesus was the sacrifice he was sacrificed right it was sacrificed for us okay and there is a period of time where you know god will then answer and then fulfill his promise but now let's look at john chapter 17 verse 4 john 17 verse 4 the sacrifice has been made the sacrifice has been made um john 17 verse 4 says i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do i have finished the work that which thou gavest me to do the work has been done the sacrifice has been made the sacrifice has been made john chapter 19 to 30 john 19 to 30 um to 30 John 19 30 says um, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost you know when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished the sacrifice is done it is finished all the prophecy has been fulfilled everything is done everything is fulfilled right first John chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 says um, before we actually go into this, right, one thing I want you to know, know is that Jesus is the propitiation of our sins and for the sins of the whole world. Let's look at the word propitiation, 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 actually. Okay, so the word means atonement right the word means atonement jesus is the atonement of our sins is the sacrifice of our sins and for the sins of the whole world okay so now let's now go into first john chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 which says my little children this things write i unto you that ye sin not right and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous so um yes <laughs> okay let's just read that i'm going to clarify certain things um so we do have an advocate with the father so there is someone that's advocating for us it's not like the time when in was it like yes it was second samuel chapter six um where uza basically touched the ark of god and basically god struck him there and he died right it's not the same case we have an advocate here with christ christ advocates for us if we sin christ advocates for us but that does not mean that there is no consequences for our actions there is no consequences for our sin every action has consequences on this earth on this earth okay so now it says my little children this things write i unto you ye sin not that ye sin not and if any man sin you have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the propitiation of our sins and not of ours only but also for the sins of the whole world so the whole world the entire world they do have access to this amazing beautiful um jesus that we worship right they do have access to gaining access to get they do have um the means to gain access to everything that he has done they have access to the blood of jesus to wipe away all their sins so that they wouldn't continue to carry curses generational curses on their heads many of them say they want to clear up generational curses they want to get out of poverty they want to get out of death but you're not do making the right steps and 
you know it's big and many times often because of you know going to jesus and giving your life to jesus is very easy for them to be like it can't it, the fact that it's too easy that there's something wrong it's the idea that their their master the devil has put in their mind that if it's too easy then it's probably um fraud <laughs> okay um with with christ he, he treats us with gentleness and with love and um yeah um the bible says that you know jesus has given himself to us that even if we strike him it will give us his face to strike again because of is the lamp of god he, he because that is what he's supposed to do that because of his love for god he's giving himself to the will of the father and because he loves us so much we are his friends um and it says that he is the propitiation of our sins, not just for us only, but for the sins of the whole entire world. Whoever believes in him can gain access into this life, right? And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. If you know Jesus, you will keep his commandments. As a child of God, do you have um, the right to say, well, I do have the Holy Spirit now and I have the conviction conviction of the Holy Spirit. Do I want to do things my own way? Yes, you do have the right to do that and people do that. But it doesn't mean that your, your actions don't have any consequences. Verse 4 says, He that said, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected so there is a there's an action when you keep the, the commandments of God the love of God is perfected the love of God verily is the love of God perfected hereby know we that we are in him do you know what it means to have the love of God look at the relationship David had with God okay you are you are setting a standard for the next generation you are literally you know setting the path for the, your children children the love of god will rest in your home you know the blessings of god the presence of god will rest in your home no action that you make right now does not have consequences trust me if it doesn't fall upon your own head it will fall upon the head of the next generation are you listening to me he said, we that are, are said, we that said he abideth in us, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Do you know what that means? It means that we ought to walk like Jesus. Jesus walked in love. We ought to walk in love as well. Okay? Now, let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Okay? We're going to talk about the promise of God being unfulfilled. Um, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 nine okay and it says the lord will not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness and is long suffering to us to um, to us word not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance right and i feel like you know we're in this season where we're like well why can't jesus come already first of all you can't you can't have that type of speech if you're a child of god um because of the mercy of god right let's go back now to second samuel and we're going to be going back to this because and i'm telling you that this is the anchor in which everything was made manifest second samuel chapter 7 verse 13 and it says he that built he shall build an house for my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom forever i will be his father and he shall be my son um, if iniquity if he commits iniquity i will chasten him with the rod of men and the stripes of the children of men and 15 which is where we're going to but my mercy shall not depart from him do you understand what that means jesus is here just imagine this is jesus right inside of jesus we are inside of him even the old world the unbelievers are still inside of jesus okay the unbelievers are still inside of him and the father already said it before he said that his mercy will not depart from him will not depart from jesus so when jesus when when god looks at this um looks at jesus he sees him but he, he doesn't really see you he sees jesus right because jesus has encompassed everything colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says for inside of him all the fullness of the godhead bodily so we're inside of him okay so jesus is the one that is carrying us so when god sees jesus and it, it, when god sees 
us it sees jesus right it sees jesus it doesn't see us and that is why jesus said no one can come through the father except through me god is literally looking and he's saying jesus 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 are you listening to me okay so now let's go to second peter chapter 3 verse 9 so because of that mercy that we have um because of that mercy that god has on jesus that is the reason why the world is not destroyed now it's because of the love god has for his son are you listening to me because of the love if it's just because of us god would have destroyed the entire world just like the way he did in the in days of noah it would have destroyed the world okay but every time god looks at the world all he sees is jesus he sees every he sees everything that he's done he sees how perfect he is even though he carries the sin even though he carries the sin in his body inside of his body and i want you to not look at it in a more physical way this is spiritual talk we're, we're doing here even though he carries the sin we are the sin that he carries inside of him are you listening to me but there are certain people inside the body of christ that have received him you and i will receive them and if you've not received jesus this is an opportunity for you to give your life to christ we have received him and we're going to be talking about our life in christ jesus second peter's chapter let's go back again to that okay verse three verse um, verse three chapter three verse nine it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The promise of God is to create a new heaven and a new earth. To kill this old thing. Right? To kill it. To kill it off. And to create a new one. Okay. So, and it says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But is long-suffering to us who are not willing that he doesn't want anybody to perish but that all should come to repentance and this is because of the love God asked for Jesus he doesn't want anyone to perish are you listening to me this is really crucial okay so now let's look at Isaiah chapter 60 Isaiah chapter 60 all right and it says arise and shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee the forces of the gentiles shall come unto thee the multitudes of camels shall cover thee the dromedaries of medians and ephah all they from sheba shall come they shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of the lord all the flocks of kedah shall be gathered together unto thee the rams of Neoboth shall minister unto thee they shall come up with acceptance of mine altar on mine altar and i will glorify the house of my glory of my glory i will glorify the house of my glory that is the temple are you listening to me the body okay i will glorify the house of my temple of my glory listen to me this is the word of god the word of god is true who are those that fly as a cloud and the dove of their windows surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of tashish first to bring thy sons from far their silver and their gold with thee unto the name of the lord thy god and to the only one of israel because he has glorified thee the sons of strangers shall build up their walls and their kings shall minister unto thee for in my wrath i smote thee jesus 
but in my favor have I had mercy unto thee are you listening to me somebody somebody are you listening to me therefore thy gates shall be open continually they shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought for the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish are you listening to me the nations and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish that is the promise of God are you listening to me hmm yea those nations shall be utterly wasted Hmm. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fig tree and the pine tree and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. I will make the place of my feet glorious. The presence of God. We are establishing a place to invite the presence of God that will be with us and dwell with us forever. Are you listening to me? Oh, Kabaya. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come unto thee so those ones that are afflicting you to come to thee oh masha takabaya oh re paso takalibo zonde shasa tipo zarabalibo zonde kesa takabaye oh ropo zonde kesa and all and and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet oh kasata karabaye and they shall call thee the city of the lord the zion of the only one of israel whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated so that no one went through thee i will make thee an eternal excellency a joy of many generations thou shalt also suck the milk of gentiles and shall suck the breast of kings and thou shalt know that i the lord am thy savior and thy redeemer the almighty one of jacob i am for brass i will bring gold hey and for iron i will bring silver and for wood brass and for stones iron i will also make thy officers peace and thy exactors righteousness violence shall no more be heard in thy land wasting nor destruction within thy, thy borders for thy for thou shalt call thy wall salvation are you listening to me thou shalt call thy wall salvation and thy gates praise the sun shall no more thy light by day the, the sun shall no more thy night by thy light by day we will no longer need the sun are you listening to me neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee <laughs> hey but the lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light so the lord is a, because of his presence the lord will be our light our everlasting light and thy god thy glory are you listening to me thy shall no more go down oh kasata kabaye the lord will not depart from us he says because the son of, is the source of our son he said thy son shall no longer go down he's not departing from us neither shall thy moon withdraw itself for the lord shall be thy everlasting light is for us is for our god forever and the days of thy morning shall be ended thy people also shall be all righteous everyone will be righteous in the new jerusalem are you listening to me they shall inherit the land forever the branch of my planting the works of my hands that i may be glorified the little one shall become a thousand and a small one a mighty nation i the lord shall hasten it is going to hasten it are you listening to me it's going to hasten it in his time Oh, are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? Are you listening to me? This is the promise of God. This is the promise of God unfulfilled. Now, do you understand when you read in Second Peter's when we're in Second Peter chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 6? Let's go back to it so that we can understand it again. Okay. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, what? Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Are you listening to me? There is something at stake here. There is something massively at stake here. Are you listening to me? Let's now do Matthew chapter 24 verse 1 to 31 it says and jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple 
are you listening to me <laughs> these disciples came to show him the building of the temple and jesus said unto him at this point jesus had just finished talking arguing and crushing the sadducees and the pharisees are you listening to me this is the cycle said unto him see ye not that all these things see ye not that not all these things his disciples told him don't you see all these things verily i say unto unto you there shall no not be left there one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down are you listening to me that is the jesus saying the prophecy the temple will be brought down and on the third day shall be what revived resurrected are you listening to me are you listening to me and as he sat upon the mount of olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be when will all these things be made manifest and i know someone there that is saying well, you know it's been a while you know they've been saying jesus is coming jesus is coming jesus is coming when is he coming his disciples asked the same questions tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and jesus answered and said unto them take ye that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear the wars and the rumors of wars and see be not troubled and see that ye be not troubled do not be afraid in the times in the last days for all these things must come to pass are you listening to me but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places all these things are the beginning of sorrows <clears throat> are you listening to me then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted they shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold many will begin to hate god but he that shall endure until the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come even daniel spoke about the desolation of the world and how it's going to happen are you listening to me go and read and meditate on matthew chapter 24 verse 1 to 31 but i'm not going to finish it one thing i want you to understand is there is a promise and we're in a process or in manifesting the prophecy of god i've talked to you about the in this video called um god's our preservation is god's priority go and look at that video and be blessed are you listening to me so now let's go back and plug into what we're saying the burden of of the cross the burden of the curse the the the, the main scripture was basically god telling telling god and um, jesus telling god you know take this take this can you take this from me like this burden is just too much but if it's that i will no father let it let it manifest let it be made manifest are you listening to me when i was actually preparing for this the holy spirit brought me to mark chapter 13 verse 32 he said add this into it add this into it add this into it and that's what i'm going to be sharing with you today mark chapter 13 verse 32 it says but of that day and that hour no worth no one on the on the day all this is going to happen and I've, i only gave you a snippet matthew chapter 24 and i said 1 to 31 but i didn't read it all because of time but of that day you need to dive deeper and see exactly everything that's going to happen in details but on, of that day and that hour no one no one no one is going to know not the angels which are in heaven neither the son but the father even jesus does not know when that day is going to happen only god the the one that you know inside of him encompass everything including jesus are you listening to me the embodiment of everything including jesus are you listening to me are you listening to me are you listening to me only god knows when this day would happen only god knows only god knows are you listening to me now we understand everything that's going to happen we know that there's going to be persecution we know everything now i want to address 
this misconception that you know a new creation can sin and it will be okay right there's this misconception that because uh, you know we are we are the righteous righteousness of Christ Jesus that automatically we are free to do whatever and we have freedom to do whatever we want to do yes we've been freed from the chains of the evil one we're no longer a, a slave to sin we're no longer a slave to curse generational curses death does not have any leverage on us anymore because we have received eternal life but does that give us permission as christians to sin is it okay to sin given the fact that we have all of this benefit in christ jesus does that give us permission to sin and i know one scripture that you know people that think like this usually use to argue the same is second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 let's go into it and it says for he hath made him to be sin for us. We know that because he carries us inside of him. Right? Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So that we might be made the righteousness of God inside of him. There is a reason why we are made the righteousness of, of God inside of him. Those people in the world, they are like viruses inside of Jesus. Okay? We are made to be righteousness of the righteousness of, of God inside of Jesus because we're there to make a difference, to counter whatever the enemy has against him. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? we have the responsibility to reduce the afflictions of jesus by walking in the spirit and preaching the gospel imagine if you are there's a body you have a body jesus is the body okay is the body i've, I've explained everything before don't say you are confused at this point we have push 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 we have pushed to a point brothers and sisters jesus is the body are you listening to me? Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the God at bodily. Okay? We've talked about this. So inside of you are these people who are sinners. But there are certain people. Okay? There are certain people. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says that for he has made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? He has, you know, carried us. He has carried us inside of him. Now he is now sin because you know we are sinful. But then there are people. He said he, he, he did all of this so that we might be made the righteous, righteousness, righteousness of God inside of him. Okay, we are by him inside of him, by him inside of him, by him inside of him. But there are still the whole world is still inside of him. There is still a plague inside of him. There is still sin inside of him. It is our responsibility now to re re reduce the affliction on Jesus because now he's afflicted. Jesus is afflicted with sin. It's a virus. The sinners are viruses inside of Jesus. Are you listening to me? Now it's our responsibility to preach the gospel to reduce the affliction of Jesus. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? Are people that are supposed to be workers and laborers in Christ are now the one acting as sinners. These ones are now the fornicators. These ones are now the sinners. These ones are now the liars. These ones are now the thieves. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Let's go to Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 says, Another one that we use is, Not by works of righteousness, <laughs> which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. They understand it's like, well, you know, we don't need to act we don't need to be self-righteous it's not by our self-righteousness that we have the life that we have now which essentially is true it's not by your self-righteousness that you have the life that you have now because if we look back in the old testament and everything they did in leviticus chapter 16 they had to kill bullocks they had to kill goats and all of these things they had to do just for purification purposes so they can gain access just for purification purpose purposes so they can gain access into the presence of god so that they can be blessed are you listening to me are you listening to me not even because of the blessings because of so you can alleviate the curses upon your lives 
are you listening to me so you can escape from death during that time if someone had committed a certain sin they would have things like le leprosy all those things are signs of death are you listening to me but this is not saying that you should not be righteous the, the only reason why it is said here not by the works of your righteousness is because you did not walk your righteousness did not give you eternal life are you listening to me your walk your right your walk of righteousness did not give you eternal life jesus did he died for you but it does not mean that you should be walking in sin after you've been saved it does not mean that it does not permit you are you listening to me because the holy ghost is being renewed inside of you the only Ghost, and i want to say another thing the holy ghost remains in a a, 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 a body a sub body in christ if they don't grieve it if you grieve the holy spirit the holy spirit will leave you so don't pretend like as if you will have the holy spirit and that's it no there has to be a renewing of the Holy Ghost inside of you, which says in Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Are you listening to me? But you have to make sure that you honor the Holy Ghost inside of you. So your responsibility now as a child of God is to make sure that you reduce the affliction of Christ. Are you listening to me? Is somebody listening to me today? Is somebody listening to me today? let's now go into first john chapter 2 verse 1 to 6 i really want to go back to it again so that you can see with your own eyes you can see now it says here verse 3 and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments he that said i know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not inside of him how would you look how would you say you are of god you know god you know God if you're not following his ways. If you love him, would you afflict pain upon him? If you love God, will you would you afflict pain upon him? No. Second Samuel, let's go on to second Samuel chapter 7, verse 13. Okay. And it says here, He shall build an house for me. We know that. For my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom forever i will be his father and he shall be my son if he commits iniquity so if the if the humans inside of him commits iniquity god will chasten him with the rod of men and the stripes of the children of men are you listening to me there is consequences for your action there is consequences for your action even though after that god said he will have mercy he will have mercy his mercy shall not depart from him but there is consequences for, for your action jesus will be chastised with the rod of men and the stripes of the children of men there is consequences for your action sin brings about death and you know it's funny because man thinks that you are sinning and you're getting away with it because when god sees the world god sees when god sees the world he sees the body of christ he sees jesus right and his mercy extends to them but you are sinning <laughs> you in the interior you are sinning accelerating further the death of that body because everything that has happened is manifesting itself in the physical Jesus' body will die eventually and he will surely resurrect on the third day resulting in the new heaven and the new earth there's going to be a new body regenerated where there would be no sinners and where the presence of God will dwell forever never depart from us are you listening to me so when you sin that you're thinking you're fooling God you're fooling yourself you're accelerating the process even more despite the mercy of God 
it is by our own ends that we will use to destroy it all and if you want to even look at this viewpoint in a more secular perspective then look at the issue with climate change and how we ourselves are causing the world to deteriorate at a fast rate the, it's, it, that, that is a, a sign a, a sign a physical sign of what is happening in the spiritual the time the end time is very near the only thing that is literally keeping us is the mercy of God are you listening to me brothers and sisters it's the mercy of God without the mercy of God we, we will have been long gone and it is because of Jesus it is because of Jesus what he did if you have not given your life to Christ I suggest that you think about it Luke chapter 9 verse 23 says and he said unto them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross daily and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake the same shall save it for what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself and be cast away for whosoever shall be ashamed of him of me and of my word and of, of him shall the son of man be ashamed are you listening to me if you are ashamed of jesus and his word the son of man will be ashamed of you too for when he comes in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels i tell you and i tell you of the truth there be some standing there there be some standing here which shall not taste of death are you listening to me some will not taste death till they see the kingdom of god are you listening to me let's go to luke chapter 9 verse 57 to 62 and it says and it came to pass that as they went in the way a certain man came unto them unto him lord I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Okay? And he said unto another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Like, wait, I want to go do something. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. And go thou and preach to the kingdom. Preach the kingdom of God. Preach of the kingdom of God. Excuse me. Preach of the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back his feet for the kingdom of God. So if you are in here watching this video right now, and you're like, mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe. Make the decision now. Make the decision now. Make the decision now. Are you listening to me? There is no more time. There is no more time. If you've not given your life to Christ, repeat this after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, O oh God, my Jesus. Come into my life. Take over of my life in Jesus' name. Amen so i want to actually continue this video but my battery is actually low my battery is actually low i'm going to be making i think i'm going to actually extend this and i will continue, I to continue. To my phone to kind of continue because my camera just went off but congratulations to anyone that actually like made the prayer to give their life to christ um your you will want to nourish your spirit so I would definitely advise that you just make sure you are validating whatever resources that you get getting with the word of God and don't just feed your spirit with just any type of material. Okay. So the next point that I want to actually say is that salvation comes with a price and pain. It comes with pain. It comes with suffering. Okay. So I want us to look at Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 15 and it says, for thus said the Lord of Israel unto me, take up, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. Okay. The cup of this fury, the cup of this fury. Okay. That's the cup of suffering. Okay. 
Matthew chapter 26, verse 42 says, okay, one second. It says, he went away again and the second time he prayed and saying, oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Even Jesus hesitated to take the cup. Okay. And, and Jeremiah chapter, chapter 25 verse um, 15 is saying, God is telling Jeremiah, wait, let me see. For thus said the Lord, you know, Jeremiah is prophesying here, take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it, the cup of fury. Okay. So even Jesus was hesitating to take the cup. Let's look at Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28. It says here that, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink, ye all of it. And this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Okay. So now that we know, even when we read the, the Isaiah, was it Isaiah chapter 60? Um, we read a scripture. Yeah, I think it says Isaiah chapter 60 or Matthew chapter 24, verse 1 to 31. That talked about, you know, how the world would end and how there would be um, persecutions of the saints and everything like that. So pretty much there's going to be persecution. There's going to be um, trials and tribulation, especially in this end time. But good news, good news, good news, good news, good news, good news. I wanted to like drum roll, but like <laughs> good news. John chapter 16, verse 33 um, says, you know, these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world. Ye shall have tribulation, but, right? But e, but be, oh my goodness, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer because Jesus has, overcome the world he said he said these things have i spoken unto unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer because god has overcome the world jesus So there is, there is light. Yeah, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So, but the, the end is worth it. I know we look, we already saw everything that's going to happen in Isaiah chapter 60, but I'm going to be talking in my next video about, you know, the new heaven and the new earth. So we're going all the way to revelations. So yeah, that is going to be pretty exciting. So thank you so much for watching my video today. But before I go, I want to pray for you. So close your eyes. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for the souls of this amazing, beautiful people in the body of Christ. I thank you for loving them up like amazing. You're amazing. Thank you for loving them. And I'm so grateful for how much you've done for us. Thank you. And we exalt your holy name, O oh God. Thank you for speaking through me today and for the message that we all got today. And we are edified in our spirits and our love for you grows every single day through the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for communion with us today. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that for as many that are going through trials and tribulation at this time, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that they remember that Jesus already overcome the world and they take that word and they, they, they have the confidence in the word of God that their situation is not, temp is not permanent, but it's temporary. In the name of the Lord Jesus, they are overcomers. They are more than conqueror. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you, O oh God, for yes, Lord, for as many. I pray that as many that are going through trials and tribulation, I pray that you give them victory in their situations. In the mighty name of the 
the Lord Jesus. Father, we exalt you, O oh God, and I pray that even as the word gets into their spirit, a testimony will be brought forth in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So thank you so much for watching my video today. I really appreciate it. And I know that your faith will be increased even as you seek God in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Bye, guys.